All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Long March 5 mod, which is being made by Wan Hu. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your very own Chinese Long March 5 rocket, which is a pretty awesome. So let's uh, jump here into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. And let's grab our ourselves a mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison sake and move it up a bit because oh boy some of these parts are pretty big as well the long march 5 is a pretty heavy launch rocket and in fact the size of variety that you're going to be seeing here are a uh, five meter diameter parts so uh yeah real big and then of course let's turn on our mod filter just leaving on one who and we'll be starting here in the fuel tanks category as this is a launch vehicle, so we really don't have any command pods to speak of here. It's just for launching whatever satellites or space station parts you've designed. And we'll start with the LOC000022 part. Yeah, the names on this are a little bit weird, so I'm just going to refer to them as the final couple of numbers. So this is the 22. And it is a very large fuel tank holding 5,750 five liquid fuel as well as 7034 oxidizer and if we pop this baby on here it's um yeah freaking ginormous we actually got to zoom out for this one uh, there we go it is not only a very wide part again being five meters in diameter but it's just also super long this thing holds a lot of fuel and it's just a pretty gorgeous looking fuel tank while holding so much fuel a lot of good detailing has gone into this which is a very nice and very appreciated i always do like a uh, fuel tank with more detail than it probably needs to have it's just always a good sign for future parts now let's pop this thing off and have a look at the next one here the 24, which is much smaller, only holding 1,800 liquid fuel and 2,200 oxidizer. But the 24, if we zoom on in there, is still quite large, but seems to go down in size from the 5 meter to probably around the 2.5 or maybe 3 meters or so roughly there and again just another nice part of very good detailing to it just looks wonderful you do gotta love it and then after that if we uh, zoom back out again we're gonna need it the final of the fuel tank category we have is the 26, which holds 2,700 liquid fuel and 3,300 oxidizer. And if we pop this thing on here, it, it can be used as a radial tank, but as you can see there, it does have an attachment node on the side for you to more easily attach it to a uh, specific decoupler part we'll see later on. But it's a really cool looking and just awesome radial fuel tank for really any ship use which is pretty cool and of course does have another attachment node down here on the bottom for your engine and a nice little winglet that doesn't actually seem to offer any control there's no aerodynamic properties here so it's just for looks but it looks good and let's pop those off and then head down to the engine category where we have a uh, three uh, lovely new engines uh, the first of which is the three which has an alternator producing six electric charge per second now the engine itself will produce a maximum of 500 kilonewtons of thrust in a vacuum with an isp of a 290 it will use liquid fuel and oxidizer and has a six degree gimbling range and if we pop it on there it's uh by far the most basic of the three engines not a whole lot of detail to it at least down in the bottom portion of the top you do get a lot of nice little bits and bobs uh, but all in all though still a good and a useful engine with some decent power there now the next engine we have is 
The Six. A lot more detail on this one. I very much do enjoy it, but uh, stat-wise, it has a 15, or rather will produce 15 electric charge per second with its alternator. Again, it's only producing 500 kilonewtons of thrust, but with a higher ISP at 450 in vacuum, once more using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and once more having that vectoring range of uh, 6 degrees on uh, the gimbling. And as you can see here, it's a very cool, detailed looking engine. I really do like it. It's kind of odd though, having like the square bit there, then going down to the more roundish engines, but hey, it works, it looks good, and I like it. I like it, I like all just the little random struts about. Very good. And then let's pop this baby off and look at the final of the engines, which is the number eight, which this one producing a lot of electric charge at 32 per second with the alternator also produces a lot more thrust at 1,100 kilonewtons in vacuum with an ISP of 310 using liquid fuel and oxidizer, but a much lower gimbling range at only four degrees of vector range. If we pop that one on, it of course is made for the center five meter column and is a little bit more boring, at least on the top part, but some good detailing on the underside. A very nice, another dual engine system there that just looks good and works with the rest of the system. Now, after that, we have nothing in command and control, but in structural, oh boy, we have the number 36, which as you can see from the B-roll footage having to be outside, this thing is gigantic. It is a launch tower for the rocket. It is a decoupler with zero ejection force and is a generator producing 100 electric charge per second. And it is just massive and I love it. It is a pretty cool part. In fact, I'm really, I mean, I guess I could clip it onto there, but inside of the VAB, it's uh, kind of a waste to see. Very nice detailing on it though, lots of good stuff. It does actually fit on top of the launch pad quite snugly, which is pretty cool, but let's pop that thing off. Now we have uh, nothing in robotics, but in coupling, we do have the number 20, which is the decouplers designed to go along with the number 26 engines to be arratedly attached to the outside. Now they do actually have some little uh, solid rocket boosters to help boost away said fuel tank, and it will produce 50 kilonewtons of thrust with an ejection force on the decoupler aspect of it of one, and holding five solid fuel for the little thrusters. And if we pop it onto here. It's kind of awkward to see on this part because, well, it is meant to be attached to the main central body of the rocket, but it is cool. You can see the little engines there. Uh, very nice indeed. A nice little uh, radial decoupler. Now, after that, in payload, we've got three pieces, the first of which being the number 18, which is where you'll be putting the main payload for any of your missions onto, and it has, stat-wise, electric charge of 200. It does have a solid fuel holding two for use with a little thruster engine to clear it away from your payload, producing 10 kilonewtons of thrust. It is also a decoupler with five ejection force, and also has a built-in reaction wheel of 100 torque on all axes which is pretty cool and if we pop it on here is a uh, very nice little um, base for any of your hardware very good there as you can see it has a couple of attachment points of course on the bottom on the top and then one on either side for the very specific fairings that we have here to protect your payload the first of which of course being the number 38. Now there is also the number 40 and I displayed both of them together here because well they both have the same stat of a thousand ejection force as a decouplers and both will provide some protection for your payload just either if you want the taller number 40 or the shorter number 38. And if we zoom on out here and pop these babies onto there you can see it a bit more closely just how massive these parts are. They are going to protect quite a lot of payload. I mean, the number 38 here is perfect for any larger scale satellites, and the 40, frankly, that's... 
That's enough to hold a very large section of a space station right there. That's, I mean, remember, again, here's our little command pod. It's going to hold a whole heck of a lot in the interior of this thing, which is a pretty cool and just, again, looks very nice. Now that after that, we have nothing in aerodynamic, nor ground, nor thermal, nor electrical, nor communication, nor science cargo or utility. And that's because... Well, we ended with this here. And, uh, yeah, some very fun, good parts. Now, thankfully, the mod download did also come with a pre-made version of uh, the ship here, if we bring that online. Now, I... Oh, boy, I actually forgot I saved my own copy because I discovered one problem that I have with this and that the decoupler that holds the... Hold on here. if That holds the 22 center sort of fuel tank to the 26 radial fuel tanks yeah that uh, number 20 decoupler there doesn't hold it all together very well and in fact it only actually does seem to hold it at that point right there even though we do have another point down here it's only holding the radial fuel tank at that top portion so I did actually have to add in some struts to keep those uh, fuel tanks from wobbling quite a bit before and during launch and let's just head on out to launch this baby and just see it in all of its just gigantic magnificence just look at how big this thing is it's just I mean, I, I'm running out of words for big and massive. It's just that great. And as you can see here, it uh, the launch pad here, the number 36, boy, they really need better naming on these, does fit quite snugly onto the launch pad, even with these uh, staircases here, sort of actually tapering down to these points on the launch pad, where then you could actually have your Kerbals walking up and down it. Now, you may potentially have wanted the, this thing rotated the other way, so it makes a bit more sense that they'd be walking up the ladders on this side but still nonetheless it is a uh, very cool and just again massive and beautiful look at that thing it's just ginormous all right so let's uh throttle this baby up and take it off in five four three two and one and then release now, sadly, the little arms on the launch tower here do not actually seem to separate or anything like that. You just sort of phase through them, but, oh well, it still works quite nicely. We then have our nice effects. Oop, forgot to turn on SAS there. For flight control, we're tilting a little bit. But yes, a very good, solid launch. Now, this thing altogether can very easily get into space. It has a lot of power. Now that's with my current payload, which is literally just a Mark 1-2 command pod. Uh, but if you did have a much heavier payload in there, of course, adjust accordingly. But thankfully, since these are not solid rocket boosters, we can throttle these babies down and uh, then fire. There they go. They're little solid rocket boosters. Ooh boy, kind of kind of moved it away but since i wasn't powering up this engine well it didn't help me out in the slightest doubt did it and now we're careening back towards terra firma due to my horrible piloting all right good times i really should have changed the staging on that bit so the center engines kept moving <laughs> good times good times but then if we do throttle down stupidly once again to separate out to the uh, next stage uh, there we go pop that thing out. I really do like these engines in particular I think they may be my favorite of the engines in this pack very very cool indeed and of course the uh, Fairing uh, protecting the whole deal there came uh, around quite nicely, but then let us fire off the protective shell there it goes cut the engines here and let us safely release the payload as the solid rocket boosters on this fire backwards to help separate them safely and there they go with my one 
singular sad little payload. Oh, Jebediah, you're not making it back from this one. But yes, my friends, that is the Long March 5 mod. An awesome little selection of parts for you to enjoy to make your very own heavy launch Chinese rocket, which is a very cool. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!